I'm Chef Molly, and it has been my honor to serve the vegan community in Los Angeles for the past 13 years. And today, on Earth Day, we're making a very special announcement. We are shifting what Sage Vegan Bistro will be, and we are transitioning it to a different kind of restaurant. We are going to have Sage, a regenerative kitchen. The focus of Sage from this point forward will be regeneration, to have the soil, the microbiology, the earth, and the carbon sequestering of regenerative agriculture be at the forefront of our menu. So that means that we will be shifting from an all plant-based menu to a high quality protein from only the highest quality, most integrity, regenerative farm. So that's Molly Engelhart, and she's talking about her restaurants, Sage Vegan Bistro. I think there are three of them in LA, which now will be Sage Regenerative. Regen wait, what did she call it? Regenerative really rolls off the tongue. Sage Regenerative Bistro or Kitchen, something like that, with the addition of meat and dairy and eggs from regenerative farms. Obviously, people are are upset. I've never eaten there, but if I lived there and regularly ate there, I would be too. And to be honest, I would not continue to eat there. So I get why people are upset. Of course, I don't condone any death threats. I don't condone, I haven't seen any death threats, but I did see, you know, people putting forth the typical conspiracy theories that Molly was never actually vegan or vegetarian. This was all kind of like a ploy or something. I think that's really silly. I don't think she's a bad person having watched some of her stuff. Sorry, I know my voice is crazy. <laughs> Might be a little too early to record during a cold. Reading, for instance, this interview, which is what I'll be focused on, the Bon Appetit interview with her. I don't think she's a bad person at all. I believe that she believes in regenerative agriculture, mostly based on the experiences she's had, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's just a lot easier for anyone, including vegans, when someone quote unquote leaves, you know, leaves the tribe to see them as the enemy and never really vegan, right? We really don't like the thought that someone was as vegan as we are, as committed, and then they're not anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's really uncomfortable. So let's get into the interview. She tells this story about buying a farm in 2018 so that she could compost the food waste from her restaurants, which is pretty, pretty cool. They had some sheep and one night some dogs broke in while the sheep were grazing and killed most of them, I guess, without even eating them. They just kind of ripped their throats out left them there to bleed to death. My husband had to knock door to door to find a gun to be able to put the rest of the sheep out of their misery. He then harvested all the meat and fed all these families in the community around us. I remember thinking, wow, I'm just here crying and my husband is salvaging all those calories to give to people. I was really moved by that, but I still had the policy of nothing being killed on the farm. But I thought nature is just as harsh as anything that humanity can do or worse. I've been doing this for so long now for quite a number of years, right? Listening and responding to ex-vegan accounts. And yet I am still shocked by statements like this. Long time vegetarians and vegans. She was raised by a vegan mom, Engelhart. That's the cafe gratitude people, right? She was raised in this sort of ethical system with these ideas and yet doesn't understand the difference between breeding animals to kill and eat them and making the best of a bad situation, right? Not letting potential food go to waste. She says she has many awakening moments, you know, that led her to ultimately want to serve animal products to customers. And this is one of them. I, it's so incredibly odd to me. Yes, nature is cruel. I remember years back watching some ducks, two males and a female, and the males were fighting over the female. And it was like surprisingly brutal. I just never, I don't know, I never thought about ducks fighting, I guess, but it, it was just, it was awful. And then the, the winner, like, grabbed the female by the neck and just, like, was dragging her away. It was awful. Nature fucking sucks. And so does this. Just because animals evolved to be cruel to others as part of survival, it doesn't mean this is justified. It doesn't mean the world couldn't be better if we didn't have this. Animals die all of the time horribly in nature. They also die all of the time horribly in captivity on farms when they don't have to. We kill so many animals for food when we can just eat other things. Regardless of what's happening in nature, shouldn't we want to reduce suffering where we can? 
In reality, everything dies and every bite of food is grown with it. Whether you're eating a piece of pork or you're eating a cabbage, that cabbage was grown with blood meal or bone meal or chicken poop all out of the factory farming system. That idea that I could eat without harm, that my diet could cause less harm, it became really clear that it was a fantasy. So she has really drunk the carnivore Kool-Aid here, right? With this myth that vegans and omnivores, they're the same actually. We all kill the same number of animals with our dietary choices. No, no, we obviously do not. Vegan food results in significantly fewer deaths. If you're eating animals, you're also essentially eating the plant matter that was used to grow those animals, which was grown with animal manure, right, to fertilize. It was harvested, resulting in some amount of animal deaths. So you're not only contributing to the deaths involved in the growing and harvesting of the plants, but you're also clearly involved in the deaths of the cows and pigs, chickens, whatever, that you're eating. Which one to choose? It's, it's such an impossible choice. And then someone will say, well, what if you just ate one or two cows a year? First, you're not doing that. Second, please don't do that because it's obviously not healthy. And third, it's not a sustainable solution that a large number of people can adopt, which is what we care about when we're talking about environmental sustainability and animal welfare. I didn't expect so much pushback against regenerative agriculture as a concept. I think there's lots of evidence that it works. To me, the evidence is so clear. People will say, can you show me a paper? I'm like, I can tell you my own soil tests. She didn't expect a lot of pushback when her response is her own personal experience. She didn't expect a lot of pushback when her evidence on Instagram is a farmer, a ranch, another ranch, another farmer, another ranch, and a nonprofit that she was once part of. Now, if this is evidence for like, you can make money selling regenerative agriculture, yeah, Molly, we're aware. What we actually want is the evidence for regenerative agriculture as a sustainable farming practice. Where is that? Studies suggest that while some farms of well-managed grazing can increase the health and productivity of soil, there is little proof that this has much impact on soil's ability to capture carbon. To the extent that soil can act as a carbon sink, a widely cited article in Frontiers in Climate argues that it can do so through practices like cover crop rotation, tillage, and novel soil amendments that don't use animals at all. But cows are no cows, the idea that soil can act as a meaningful carbon sink at the scale at which global climate change currently operates is itself not entirely convincing. So again, I don't condone any hatred, certainly not death threats or anything that are being thrown at Molly, but for her to be surprised <laughs> that people aren't buying the regenerative agriculture bullshit, Molly, we don't give a shit about your soil tests, especially in light of the actual evidence we have regarding plant-based diets and how much better they are for the environment and animal welfare. You're not selling us on this, man, <laughs> especially not by linking us to fucking ranches. Come on. <laughs> what I believed before is not what I believe now. And when we identify with anything as our personality or as our identity, anything that pushes up against that is scary. We will reject it and try to tear it down so that the personality can stay intact. That is true. And it means we can say that about other identities as well, not just veganism. As she says, regenerative ag is really important to her. Maybe this is her new identity. And so any criticism of regenerative ag will just be rejected so that the regenerative ag personality can stay intact. Just a thought. Speaking of personality or bias, we really can't ignore the potential financial incentive here. Molly says in this interview, the Bon Appetit one, that her costs will be greater, meat is always going to cost more than vegetables and grain, implying that her decision is purely a philosophical one. Even though it's going to cost her more to start selling meat and dairy and eggs to people, she's going to do it anyway because she really believes in soil health and regenerative ag. And yet she told the LA Times that her restaurants are struggling. They have not been profitable since 2020 and part of the reason she is switching is money. AKA, she thinks she will make more by selling meat. Even though the ingredients may cost more, she thinks it's going to bring more customers in to justify that. At the end of the day, Molly is a business owner and she wants to support herself and her family. She has a large family, four or five children, I think. It's probably not too hard to convince yourself that animal farming is good, actually, if you think it will help support you and your family. Especially given her parents, again, cafe gratitude, 
they're no longer vegan either. Now, whether it actually will make her more money is another question entirely. A patron told me about this restaurant, Heirloom Vegetarian. It's a vegan restaurant, a formerly vegan restaurant that really struggled after COVID. And so they added meat to the menu and it just closed. Once vegetarian eatery Heirloom officially shutters, blames closure on Deborah. <laughs> amazing headline. I wasn't going to look into it. I was just going to leave it there because that's so funny. But I did. And turns out the the owner, I guess, of the restaurant um, became rather unhinged and really focused on this one person who I guess left a negative review, someone named Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. Queen. Yes, queen. Yes. Um, yeah. So they, they, um, they took it all out on Deborah, I guess. <laughs> Point is, I don't think this will necessarily be a financial win for Sage Regenerative Kitchen for Molly. Um, you know, it's easy to piss off vegans and we don't just get mad, like we actually take action, which is not surprising. Look at what we do, right? We avoid a ton of foods because we believe it's right to do so. So it's not hard for us, even if it's, even if you've been going to Sage for years and it's your favorite restaurant, it's really not hard for us to go, oh, you're serving meat now? No, I'll never eat there again. We already restrict our diets. Like it's not hard to just not go to a restaurant, right? So um, yeah, you you really, you really run a risk there <laughs> pissing us off. Maybe you gain a few non-vegans, but I bet they are losing a lot of vegan customers. I believe that vegans and regenerative agriculture people should come together on animal welfare. I think we should all be against the CAFO, contained animal feeding operation system, and we should all be supporting farmers doing something that's not that. We should all be against factory farming, but we don't have to support regenerative agriculture to do that. Regenerative ag is probably better for the animals and maybe slightly better for the environment. On a small scale, you cannot scale regenerative agriculture. It just requires so much land. But you know what's absolutely better for the animals and significantly better for the environment? Yeah. Speaking of animal welfare, even if these regenerative ag farmed animals are treated better while they're alive, they're still being killed. And regenerative ag seems to say nothing about how they're killed. The meat company Molly is purchasing from, Force of Nature, has very little to say about how their animals are killed. All I found was this on their wild boar page. The boars end up in a USDA slaughtering facility. AKA their last moments are just as terrible as those of conventionally farmed pigs. I'm sorry, but like, what am I supposed to be stoked about here? I'm supposed to come together on animal welfare with people who think this is fine, that this is ethical. Like, I I'm sorry, better than is not good enough when we have an alternative that involves no slaughterhouses whatsoever. The idea that by not eating meat, less animals die is an illusion. As a farmer, I realized if you're growing avocados, there's ground squirrels being trapped. No matter where man is growing food, he's trying to keep nature at bay so that it doesn't kill whatever he's growing. And therefore, death is happening. To be alive is to be on the back of death. And the only way we're going to reduce those deaths is by admitting those lives matter, right? The ground squirrel lives matter too. Not by just throwing up our hands, right? Like, uh, oh well, things die, so just eat beef. We do what we can to reduce suffering by eating plant-based while also recognizing that improvements can be made. It's just very frustrating to me because Molly and people like her really want to portray veganism and vegetarian, like how she used to be as this really emotional, out of touch position. We're just plugging our ears to all the lives lost via plant harvesting. But they are the ones using animal deaths to justify more animal death. We can't stop killing animals, so let's just kill more of them. Again, veganism is about reducing suffering, which obviously every vegan agrees with. Otherwise, like they wouldn't be here on the planet anymore, right? Like, obviously, we don't value all animal lives the same. Obviously, we don't believe that we don't contribute to any animal deaths whatsoever. So when people like Molly keep saying these sorts of things, I don't know, it's hard not to see it as intentional, just intentionally trying to make vegans look really stupid. Or maybe she really did believe that. Maybe she really <laughs> went through life thinking that she didn't I don't know, man, that's so hard to believe. There are some really silly, like new age type people who are vegan, so I don't know, maybe she was one of those. Will your dishes come with the names and photos of the animals who died for them? Because at the end of the day, we're still killing animals 
for food. And at the end of the day, these are farms. These are these are businesses, right? These animals don't even have names. They are a product. And anytime you turn a sentient being into a product, I don't care how lofty you claim your goals are on your website, the incentive to cut corners is there. To me, just to eat meat, it's not worth it. It's not worth that risk. That's it for me. I would love to know your thoughts on this whole thing. How do you feel about sage regenerative, I want to say regeneration, regenerative kitchen. Do you agree that we should come together with regenerative ag people? It's really hard too when so many of the regenerative ag people like put forth all the silly nutrition stuff as well, right? Like they they just promote so much bullshit. I think it was the force by nature that that meat company that works with a bunch of different farms. They've got all this garbage about saturated fat, plant-based diets involve genetic engineering. Oh no. It's kind of like telling immunologists that they need to come together with anti-vaxxers or vaccine hesitant people when it comes to like child health. It's like what we're we're so far away like <laughs> in terms of how we view the world and evidence. Like I, I don't think we can really join forces, you know. Just saying, yeah, factory farming's bad is not good enough. Like obviously <laughs> obviously factory farming is bad. But anyway, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe. And thank you so much to all of my patrons and my members here on YouTube. I do post two exclusive videos a month for tier two patrons and members. I do a vlog and then I do a controversial topic as well. Something that I don't really want to post to the channel. Just wouldn't really make sense to post to the channel. And yeah, that's it for me. Thanks, guys. New video soon. That wasn't so bad. I didn't cough or anything. All right.